Hi, I'm Mahesh Kam. In this episode, I'd like to tell you the story of Madeline Slade. You know who was Madeline Slade? Madeline Slade was the daughter of a British naval officer. She was interested in Indian culture and Indian spirituality. She came to India and worked with Mahatma Gandhi in the freedom struggle of India. Mahatma Gandhi gave her a name, Meera Behan. And she was known as Meera Behan, of course. She lived in his ashram. She also helped him when he was fasting and very physically weak. And this lady, I believe, is a forgotten chapter in Indian history. And I'd like to tell you about her, to pay my respect to this lady who served my country's independence movement. Please watch. She devoted her life to human development and social service and the advancement of Gandhiji's principles. Madeleine Slade was born on 22nd November into a well-connected British family in 1892. Her father, Sir Edmund Slade, was an officer in the British Navy. She had a passion for the music of Beethoven. She also visited Vienna and Germany to see the places where Beethoven had lived and composed his music. She read extensively on him. She read Romain Roland's books on Beethoven and later even met him. During this meeting, Roland mentioned about a new book of his called Mahatma Gandhi, which she had not read then. On her return to England, she read Roland's biography of Gandhi and the book convinced her to become a disciple of the Mahatma. She wrote to Gandhiji at the Sabarmati Ashram and asked him to become his disciple. Gandhiji replied inviting her over but warned her of the discipline of the ashram's inmates. Having made her decision, she went on about training herself for all the demands of an ascetic life in India, including vegetarianism, spinning and teetotalism. That year in England, she even subscribed to Young India and spent a part of her time in Paris reading the Bhagavad Gita and some of the Rig Veda in French. She arrived in Ahmedabad on 7th November 1925 where she was received by Mahadev Desai, Vallabhai Patel and Swami Anand. This was the beginning of her stay in India that lasted almost 34 years. Gandhiji at that point gave her a new name, Meera Behan at that point. During her stay in India, she went to the Gurukul Kangri to learn Hindi. Thereafter, she went to Bhagwat Bhakti Ashram of Rewari, established by Swami Premanand Maharaj to be blessed by him. She also wrote to Mahatma Gandhi from there, telling him about her experiences at the Bhagwat Bhakti Ashram. Meera Ben's stay in India coincided with the zenith of the Gandhian phase of the freedom struggle. She accompanied Gandhiji and others to a round table conference in London in 1931. The resumption of the non-cooperation movement in 1931 saw her being imprisoned during 1932 and 33 period. To plead India's case, she went abroad to meet other leaders like David Lloyd George, General Smuts and Winston Churchill and even visited the United States where she met Mrs. Roosevelt at the White House. Mira Ben also took an active interest in the establishment of the Seva Gram Ashram and worked among the people of Orissa. She was arrested and detained with Gandhiji at the Aga Khan Palace, Pune from August 1942 to May 1944, where she saw Mahadev Desai and Ankasturba Gandhi pass away. She was a witness to the Simla Conference and the Cabinet Mission, the Interim Government and the Constituent Assembly, the Partition of India and the Assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. After independence, she established the Pashu Lok Ashram near Rishikesh and a settlement called Bapu Gram and the Gopal Ashram in Bilangana in 1952. She took to dairy and farming experiments in these ashrams and also spent a while in Kashmir. During the time she spent in Kumau and Garhwal, she wrote about deforestation and effects of floods in the plains in an essay titled Something Wrong in the Himalayas, but her advice was ignored by the forest department. She returned to England in 1959. In 1960, she relocated to Austria and spent 22 years in small villages in the Vienna woods, where she died in 1982. She was awarded India's second highest civilian honor, the Padma Vibhushan, in 1981. There were a number of European ladies who served 
in the Indian independence struggle for India. But they are sort of forgotten in history. I hope you enjoyed this episode.